five whenever. All right, thank you. Good evening, everybody. We'll call to order the regularly scheduled virtual meeting of the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board. Today is Wednesday, December 1st, uh, 2021, and it is 7.08 p.m. All board members are present, including Vice Chairman Lawrence Harris, Dick Peterson, Kia Baskerville, Elizabeth Conger, and I'm Jimmy Praley. Also present tonight, we have City Attorney Mike Lyles and Deputy City Clerk Cynthia Gaines. Uh, first item is the approval of the minutes. Has the board had the opportunity to review the minutes of our last meeting, November 3rd, 2021? And if so, are there any corrections or modifications? With none, I'll, I'll entertain a motion for approval. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, those will stand as approved. Before we get started on our regular business, I'd like to state that since this is a virtual hearing, anybody who wishes to submit public testimony may do so by way of written testimony, which needs to, which will be submitted as part of the official record. Anybody who wishes to submit written testimony may do so by going to www.annapolis.gov forward slash ABC. So now we will turn to the board's new business this evening. First on the agenda is an application for a new alcoholic beverage license class B2 beer, wine, and liquor on sale only with meals, 6 a.m. to 12 midnight, seven days a week with a special Sunday license by Patrick Donahue, Stephanie Donahue, and Megan Juarez for the premises known as Picante LLC, trading as Picante, located at 48 to 50 West Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Give it a minute while everybody gets pulled in on this. Hey, Mr. Dales, how are you? Hey, Mr. Braley, good evening. I see Ms. Juarez. And then I think the Donahues are both on one. We'll both be in one box. Yeah, okay. we're here. Okay, we're here. great, great. Thanks. Good to see everybody uh, this evening. Uh, Mr. Dales, if you could just introduce everybody for us and, uh, and make sure you put your name and address on the record, please. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Fraley. Would you also like me to just begin our presentation of our case? I'm going to swear everybody in who's okay. going to plan on taking testimony, but, but if, you, the, the if everybody could introduce themselves. Are, sure. sure. The, the individual licensee applicants here with us are Mr. Patrick Donahue and Stephanie Donahue together, and then Ms. Megan Juarez, who is uh, in the panel, the panel next to me. Okay, great. So everybody who's planning on testifying tonight, um, if you could raise your right hand while I administer a quick oath. Do you solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is true and correct? I do. I do. Great. And then we're just going to need to get everybody's address for the record. We'll start with Miss Donahue. All right. The, it's Patrick and Stephanie, same address, 205 okay. Hanover Street, Annapolis, 21401. Thanks. And uh, Miss Juarez? 203 Hanover Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Perfect. And Mr. Dales, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Braley. <laughs> so the uh, property for which we seek the license was formerly part of the restaurant known as uh, El Toro Bravo. In fact, it was the original portion of the El Toro Bravo space. And the license application before you tonight seeks just to restore a restaurant use and the license associated with that restaurant use to that space. Um, I proffer you that the information included in the statement we filed in support of our application is all true and accurate, and that the individual licensees who just introduced themselves are fit and proper to hold a license. But for the record, I would ask uh, several brief questions of each licensee, and we'll try to keep testimony very quick here. So Great. with that, um, let me please call Mr. Patrick Donahue. Sure, yes, good evening. Good evening, uh, Ms. Donahue, could you uh, please just state your name uh, and, and address again for the record. I know Mr. Fraley just had to do it. Sure, sure. Patrick Donahue, uh, 205 Hanover Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. And are you, uh, Mr. Donahue, a uh, member of the LLC applicant tonight? I am. Very good. And um, uh, are you also, um, excuse me one moment here. So uh, prior to the issuance of this license, will you have completed the alcohol awareness training that you and I have discussed previously? Yes, I actually have that certification. Very good. 
And uh, also prior to the issuance of the license, uh, will you completed um, the crowd management training and obtain the certificate of completion of that training uh, before we pick up the license? Yeah, I actually have finished that training as well. That's good. And do you understand that regardless of whether you yourself are involved with the day-to-day -day operations of the license, that you'd be responsible for any violations under the license? Yeah, I am aware of that. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, finally, have you read and are you familiar with the rules of this board that govern license holders in the city? I, I have reviewed them, yes. Thank you very much. Okay, that's all from uh, Mr. Donahue. Ms. Thank Donahue, you. Could you please introduce yourself and give your address again? Yes, my name is Stephanie Donahue, D-O-N-A-H-U-E, and my address is 205 Hanover Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. And are you also a member in the licensed applicant uh, LLC? Yes, I am. Okay, and have you also completed the crowd uh, management and alcohol awareness training courses um, that Mr. Donahue has completed? Yes, I have. Okay, very good. And you understand that regardless of whether you are gonna be involved with the day-to-day -day operations of the license, that you would also be responsible for any violations you have to answer for this board? Yes, I do understand that. Okay, and are you familiar with the rules um, and regulations that govern the licenses and holders of licenses in the city? Yes, I am aware of the rules as well. Thank you very much. Okay, now Ms. Juarez, uh, she'll present our two cases tonight. Could you please say your name and address again for the record? Sure, it's Megan Juarez, 203 Hanover Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Okay, and you are also a member of the License Applicant LLC, correct? I am. Okay, and have you completed the crowd management and alcohol awareness training courses? I have. Very good. And you also understand that you'd be responsible for the uh, any violations, whether or not you happen to be there during uh, the day-to-day -day operations in question. During violations. I do. And you familiarize yourself with the rules and regulations for liquor licenses in the city? Yes. Okay, I just want to provide the, the uh, board a little context for uh, what we're proposing here. So since, Ms. Juarez, I understand you'll be most involved with the day-to-day -day operations, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about um, your experience with the experience of your, your partners in uh, the restaurant industry? Yes, certainly. Um, it's my husband who has the, the most restaurant experience. Uh, he's worked in Annapolis restaurant industry for 20 years. Um, he's worked at, as the head chef at Reynolds Tavern. He worked at Paul's Cafe, Red Red Wine Bar, and a couple of other restaurants. Um, most recently, he ran a food truck that served Mexican food throughout Anne Arundel County. Uh, he's originally from Oaxaca, Mexico, and he's looking forward to bringing Oaxacan cuisine to Annapolis. That's great. And I think that'll uh, replace a, a need that was uh, demonstrated for years and um, which is now not being met since the absence of El Foro Bravo. Mm -hmm. uh, could, could you also just give us a little more detail on that concept uh, for Dante? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we just want to bring a small piece of Oaxaca to Annapolis. Uh, Picante will be open daily for breakfast and lunch. Daytime service will include a focus on carry out and casual dining in. Um, it'll be a place to grab a quick breakfast burrito, a cup of local coffee um, before heading to work, or a spot to enjoy brunch with family and friends on the weekend. Um, in addition, Picante is well suited for the Annapolis dinner crowd. Uh, diners will be greeted with complimentary chips and salsa from my husband's grandmother's recipe. Uh, the focus of the menu will be fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican food. Um, and it will just be a, it will also have a deli counter uh, where customers can select fresh made Mexican specials such as beans and rice, chicken tortilla soup, guacamole, salsa, that kind of thing to go. That's great. Uh, uh, description of the concept, but um, is there anything else you'd like to add about the menu itself? You know, just we're, we're looking to bring some of the classic Mexican dishes that, um, you know, Annapolitans are used to, and then some things that from Oaxaca that perhaps they haven't tried before. It's my understanding that the four plans for building permits are finalized. Could you tell the board a little bit about the proposed layout for the restaurant? Sure. There's approximately 55 seats um, with an open kitchen concept so that diners can walk and walk by and see, you know, the chef in action. We have a tortilla maker that's going to be making fresh tortillas. You can kind of walk by and, and watch that, um, watch the kitchen at work, and kind of see where the food's coming from. That sounds great. Okay. Could you uh, also confirm to the board that the proposed hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 10 p.m.? 
Yes, they are. Okay, thank you. And during those hours and uh, in further into the concept you've described, are you confident that you can uh, control the operations so that they'll be carried out effectively, safely, and there won't be any negative consequences for the public um, that experiences West Street? Yeah, um, we'll have well-trained staff who'll be fully equipped to offer an enjoyable dining experience. My husband has a lot of um, experience in that area. We're not intending to compete with bars, you know, on West Street. We're looking to have just kind of a family-friendly uh, Mexican dining experience, um, hoping to bring bring back the some of the diversity that El Toro Bravo had brought to the street. Thank you. Thank you. Can you also report that it's your intention that uh, employees and in particular managers will be alcohol awareness trained? Yes, absolutely. Um, we're, we will always have a daytime and a nighttime manager present who's trained and we intend to train some of the full-time serving staff as well. Okay, thank you. And um, what experiences that did you have or what information did you, did you come across that made you uh, attracted to this space for this concept? Uh, well, I grew up in Annapolis, and I've been coming, dining in that location for decades. Um, my husband and I live less than a mile away. I'm a teacher for Anne Arundel County Public Schools. I work less than a mile away. I'm very familiar with the area. Um, my parents have a law firm right on that block. Um, we're locals who love downtown Annapolis, we know the area very well, and are looking forward to continuing to interact with um, locals, tourists, visitors, the midshipmen at the Naval Academy, and just kind of bring the community together. So related question, uh, I'll up here. Based on all that information, are you confident that there's a demand for this type of restaurant that you're seeking to open here? I think there definitely is. Um, the previous tenants ran a really busy restaurant. There was always a long wait. <laughs> um, if you know, walked by, you'd see people waiting outside. Festivals, um, the first Sunday festivals, dining under the stars. There were always a lot of people, a lot of people dining there. I think there's definitely a demand in this area for high quality, reasonably priced food, um, especially in a family friendly setting. I think we'll be able to fill that demand. Okay, thank you again. With testimony there, and I would uh, repeat for the board that um, our application statement additionally addressed the requirement for need of this license. And again, we are replacing a, a prior license at this location and um, the demographics discussed in the statement support the uh, the need for this license. So thank you very much. That'll conclude our, our case and will be available for questions by the board if, if they have any. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Dales for a thorough presentation as always. Um, when do you expect construction to be done? So, uh, I, should, I neglected to request at the beginning of the hearing that we'd like to have the pickup date set for April 1st. April 1st, okay, gotcha. Ready, or very close to ready to uh, see the issuance of our use permit at that time. Got it, okay, all right. All right, that's all I have. Uh, do any other members of the board have any questions of Mr. Dale <clears throat> or any of the applicants? I, I did have one question. I mean, I how casual are is the restaurant going to be? Uh, I would say that's probably a good question for Ms. Juarez. Yeah, I mean, not, not extremely casual. I would say similar to what El Toro, uh, to El Toro. Okay, okay. thank you. Mr. Harris, did you have a question? Yeah, <clears throat> I'd like to... Uh, Ask the Donahues to uh, review the layout and the number of seats is kind of unclear to me looking at the drawings. If we could get an accurate number, that would be great. Sure, it, it's going to seat about 55 inside. Um, and that is both to the left and the right as you enter the dining area and then down the hallway further is the kitchen that's an open concept kitchen, uh, but it'll be 55 seats uh, with uh, a variety of different types of seating, whether it's, it's, it's booths, it's regular traditional chairs, it's a bench along the wall. Um, so there'll be a variety of uh, types of seating. Okay, I guess I, I didn't quite understand the, maybe it's the booth or the bench type that 
uh, I couldn't quite count whether it was, there were three or four seats there. I couldn't quite come up with a number close to 50, but I, I got 48 was the best I could count. Well, Can you clarify. I, I can clarify that, that at least the architectural drawings reflect uh, 55 indoor seats. Uh, I believe that those are four person booths. I don't think they're six person booths. Okay. Um, Mr. And, Mr. Harris, I can confirm that the number of seats that we're using for the parking waiver, the administrative adjustment for parking waiver and on the building permit has been anywhere <clears> from 50 and 55. 55 is the most that we've included on any of those permits and applications. Thank you. Any other questions from board members? Okay, with no additional questions, do I hear a motion for this new alcoholic beverage class B2, beer, wine and liquor on Sunday, or excuse me, on sale with meals 6 a.m. to 12 midnight, seven days a week with a special Sunday license by Patrick Donahue, Stephanie Donahue and Megan Juarez for the premises known as Picante LLC. Trading as Picante, located at 4850 West Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. I make the motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. It carries. Congratulations. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Chair, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Um, you may want to put on the record that they have a, a time to pick up their uh, license. I think okay. that was talking about. Sure, sure. Yeah, and then part of the motion, but April first. Dated for the record. Sure, sure. The, I, yeah, the, the mo I think the request was April first, and we will say that the pickup date will be April first. Perfect. Six months from April first, 180 days. Perfect. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate hey, it. Thank you. Good evening. All right, Phil. I think you're sticking around for the next one. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, are we combining the next two items in the agenda or are we doing them separately? I'm going to do them separately. Um, the first uh, regarding this particular location is a request for a six month extension to pick up an approved alcoholic beverage license for 110 Compromise Street, uh, LL, excuse me, 110 Compromise Restaurant LLC, trading as 110 Compromise Restaurant, located at 110 Compromise Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. The application approval date was January 6, 2021. Requested license pickup date July 1st, 2021 to January 1st, 2022. First six month extension if approved will be January 1, 2022 to July 1st, 2022. And uh, Mr. Dales, if you just wanna put your name and address on the record and introduce whoever's here tonight on this request. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Phil Dales, Lip Walsh and Simmons, 181 Area Truman Parkway in Apples, Maryland, 21401. And I have with me, Mr. Mike Keenan. Michael Keenan. Okay. All right. You can begin your presentation. Sure. Um, we submitted a letter requesting an extension of the pickup date uh, pursuant to the board's rules. Um, 2.9 specifically, we uh, had it hoped to be opening um, this restaurant in the, in the summertime or in the fall at the earliest in a temporary um, partial fashion. So it asked for that initially asked for a uh, July pickup date, but we would now request, and we did request months ago with our letter, um, the first of our six month extensions, um, which would you know, bring the pickup date six months from uh, July. Um, but I, I think we will be back to you asking for a second uh, extension since we now expect the um, pickup date to be in April. And I don't think this first extension will get us to April. We are very confident that we'll be opening in April, but if uh, the chairman would allow it, we would make the request for that second extension um, now, rather than come back to you, if you'd like us to come back and we'll do that if it's necessary. All right, thank you. Sorry if you heard the smoke alarm in my house going off. Um, uh, does the board have any questions of Mr. Dales about this request? No? Well, hearing none, uh, I'd entertain a motion regarding the six-month extension request on the pickup of an approved alcoholic beverage license from 110 Compromise Restaurant, LLC, trading as 110 Compromise Restaurant, located at 110 Compromise Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. 
Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that's approved. And now we will turn to the substitution for the same location. Uh, we've got an application for the substitution slash deletion of an officer of an existing alcoholic beverage license, 110 Compromise Restaurant LLC trading as 110 Compromise Restaurant located at 110 Compromise Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. The new licensee proposed is Alexander F. Smith. Uh, the licensee deleted is Steve Phillips. Mr. Dales, your name and address again for the record, and if you could introduce your, uh, your proposed licensee here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, Phil Dales, Lip Walsh to Simmons, 181 Harry S. Truman Parkway, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. And uh, we have with us again, Mr. D. Michael Keenan and also uh, Mr. Alex Smith. Okay, thank you. Um, can we get Mr. Smith, your, uh, your name and address, or excuse me, your address for the record and also Mr. Keenan's name and address for the record? I believe we need to bring Mr. Keenan forward again. Oh, he's not here? Okay. Yeah, I, I just did that, sorry. Okay, great, no problem, thank you. Mr. I'll Smith, give us, give, if you could just give us your, uh, your address. Sure, Alexander Smith, 675 South President Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21202. Okay, thanks. And Mr. Keenan, same thing. Mike, you're muted. My apologies, I was muted. No uh, problem. Michael Keenan, yeah, D. Michael Keenan, 1716. Severn Forest Drive, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. All right, thanks. Mr. Dales, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. So uh, for the members of the board, we're seeking this change um, in licensees to substitute uh, Mr. Alex Smith for Mr. Steve Phillips. And the reason we're doing that is that the pandemic uh, posed some new circumstances for uh, Mr. Phillips as the partner in this licensee LLC. And as he was um, unable to continue with the plans and partnership the LLC had as a member, um, uh, Mr. Keenan uh, found uh, new members and um, a new member in Mr. Smith. And we think that that's um, actually a, a great result. And we'll be telling you a little bit about uh, Mr. Smith's background and uh, his fitness to hold this license. Uh, but essentially, we're, we're seeking this change because the partnership that the, the LLC represents um, has been forced to change in, in response to the pandemic. And the new um, licensee who's proposed as a licensee um, is, is going to step in and do what we had initially planned to do uh, with Mr. Phillips. So with that, I would ask a few questions and testimony from Mr. Yeah, Keenan. sorry, I haven't sworn him in yet, Mr. Dales. I'm just going to do that really quickly. Uh, Mr. Smith, um, if you plan on, if you're going to plan on testifying, could you please raise your right hand? Mr. Keenan, are you going to testify? Yes. It, only if you need me, sure. Sure. Do you solemnly swear, uh, swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the statements you're going to give are true and correct? Yep. Yes. Okay, great. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Dales. Go ahead. All right. Let me start with Mr. Keenan. Uh, Mr. Keenan, again, just for the record, uh, could you just say, state your name and address one more time? <clears throat> yes, D. Michael Keenan at 1716 Severn Forest Drive, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Thank you. And you're a member of the LLC applicant that's uh, listed on this approved license, correct? I am. Thank you. And can you confirm, uh, since you'll be the new resident licensee in place of Mr. Pete Phillips, that you make your residence uh, in Anne Arundel County, and that you've been registered to vote here for two years? Yes. Thank you. Um, so uh, I think that's that's all we really need from you, Mr. Keenan, unless there's anything you'd like to add about the, the need for this change in licensee that I've already touched on? Uh, no. Okay, thanks very Thank much. Thank you. Uh, so now mm -hmm. I'd ask a few questions of Mr. Smith. Uh, Mr. Smith, can you also now just restate your name and uh, address for the record? Alexander Smith, 675 South President Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21202. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit about your background, uh, especially any uh, involvement in the restaurant industry that you may have had? Sure, I've been president and CEO of Atlas Restaurant Group. Um, started my first restaurant in 2012, um, and in 2022, we'll have 27 restaurants open and operating. Okay, thank you. And can you also confirm that all the information that you've stated on the application forms, especially with regard to um, 
the questions about whether you've ever been convicted of a felony or any other violation of the laws governing the holders of liquor licenses in the state of Maryland. Can you confirm those answers were correct? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. And you understand that if you are allowed to be substituted as a licensee, that you yourself will be responsible for any violations of this license's rules and regulations and would have to appear in front of this board? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, now with all that experience in the restaurant industry that you uh, told the board about, can you uh, comfortably say that you'll, you'll run a uh, controlled operation here that would have no negative impact on the, the public with regard to the sale of alcohol? Yes, sir. We've, uh, we operate currently 20 restaurants with a liquor license and we've never had a violation in our history. Thank you. Now for the board, uh, the special exception which allows for this restaurant use has also been extended. We've not uh, modified it, um, that that is still the approval under which we're operating um, substantially. But I would, I would ask um, Mr. Smith to provide you some context about the concept for this new restaurant, which we do in business as Chop Tank. Uh, Mr. Smith, go ahead, please. Sure, uh, it's a Maryland style seafood house, um, a little bit more upscale than uh, you know, some of the other crab houses that you would see around the state. Um, we're going to offer some prime steaks and chops um, and some other types of entrees, but I think that is an upscale uh, Maryland seafood house. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, will you be sure that all of your employees, especially the managers on site, are alcohol awareness trained? Yes, sir. And will you yourself be alcohol awareness trained before issuance of this, uh, this license? I am already, and, and we'll make sure it's up to date. And will you also make sure that your crowd management license has been issued and up to date before we pick up the license? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, that's all the questions I have for Mr. Smith. If the uh, board has questions for either Mr. Smith or Mr. Keenan, we uh, answer them now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dales. Um, I don't have any questions, but we'll see if any members of the board do. Any questions for Mr. Smith, Mr. Keenan, or Mr. Dales? Mr. Smith, on your application, the first question on the application asks you if you've been a resident of Annapolis or Anne Arundel County for the past two years and you check it off as no. It's required that that answer should be yes in most cases, unless you or Mr. Dales can explain oh, this. Mr. Harris, I'll, I'll take that one. So the, the rules require that one licensee, one of the individual licensees, be a resident licensee. In this case, that's going to be Mr. Keenan. Uh, the, the original two licensees were Mr. Keenan and Mr. Phillips, both of whom were happened to be residents, but only one is required. So now with Mr. Phillips off the license, uh, or who will be off the license if you approve this request tonight, uh, Mr. Keenan becomes a resident licensee and Mr. Smith uh, it makes his residence outside the town. Thank you. Any other questions from any board members? Dave? I have a I have a question, uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, Mr. Dale said that all your managers will be tips trained. We would really like to request that all of your employees who are serving alcohol be tips trained. Not a problem, sir. Okay, we appreciate that. So you're talking about the bartenders, I assume. Bartenders and any anyone and, else. And servers. Yes. Yes, sir. No problem. Any other questions of uh, Mr. Smith, Mr. Keenan, or Mr. Dales? All right. Hearing none. Uh, do I hear a motion regarding this application for the substitution of an officer of an existing alcoholic beverage license, 110 uh, Compromise Restaurant LLC, trading as 110 Compromise Restaurant, located at 110 Compromise Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. I forward the motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. It's approved. Congratulations. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Have we lost Kia? I we may have. I don't know. She was having technical difficulties. So well, if it's all right with everybody, I think we can just kind of continue on. And if she, there she is. Kia, you there? There we go. 
Okay. I'm here. All right. I'm here. There you are. All right. Next. I heard. Item. I heard the last motion. We're good. <clears throat> okay. Great. Next item, uh, we have an application for a substitute <clears throat> officer of an existing alcoholic beverage license. Governor Calvert House Beverage Inc. Trading is Governor Calvert House, located at uh, 58 Church Circle, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. The new licensee proposed is Kimberly Early. The licensee being deleted is Tim Cook. Uh, Ms. Schreckengoss, good to see you this evening. Uh, if you could just put your name and address on the record and uh, introduce your clients here tonight. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Commissioners, nice to see you all. Leanne Schreckengoss with Royston, Muller, McLean, and Reed, 102 West Pennsylvania Avenue, Towson, Maryland, 21204. With us this evening are Daryl Strayer, the general manager, and Kimberly Early, the applicant being proposed. Great. Are either of them planning on testifying or are you going to proceed by way of proper tonight? I was going to proceed by way of proper. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Mr. Strayer, if I could just get your address for the record, um, and after you're finished, I'm going to ask Ms. Early to do the same thing. Thank you, uh, Daryl Strayer at 1213 Viking Drive North, Arnold, Maryland, 21012. Thank you, Ms. Early. 1469 Eagle Court, Arnold, Maryland, 21012. All right, thank you. Ms. Schreckengoss, go right ahead. Thank you very much. As indicated, this is a replacement. Stephen Cook has decided to, um, he realized with COVID that he can retire and work from Florida and not have to be here in Maryland. So he's leaving us, leaving the state and heading down to Florida. So he's being replaced by Kimberly Early, who is a longtime Anne Arundel County resident and registered voter. Um, I could proffer for you that Ms. Early's personal information has not changed since the time this application is filed. She has no felony convictions or violations of the alcoholic beverage laws or gambling laws. Ms. Early serves as an assistant secretary of Governor Calvert House Beverage, Inc., as well as a 1% shareholder of that entity. She's received a copy of this board's rules and regulations and understands her obligations as a licensee. She has formerly served as a licensee in Anne Arundel County, so is aware of, of the responsibilities that come with serving as a resident license holder. Um, I will tell you that the operation of this hotel is not changing as a result of this substitution. It's business as usual. It's, again, Ms. Early is the new resident agent coming in do take over for Mr. Cook. And with that, I turn it over to the board for any questions you may have. All right, great. Uh, thank you, Ms. Um, does A this lot. Any questions? Well, hearing none, uh, do I hear a motion regarding this application for the substitution of an officer of an existing alcoholic beverage license, Governor Calvert House Beverage, Inc., trading as Governor Calvert House, 58 uh, Church Circle, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. I'm out. Oh. Move for approval. Second. Second. I think we got it all. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. It's approved. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you all Thank very you. much. Take care. Good luck. All right. Next item on the agenda, we have a written request for a six-month extension on the pickup of an approved alcoholic beverage license um, for Gibellina. Um, which is located, uh, excuse me, it's, it's Church MRG LLC Trading is Gibellina, 18 Church Circle, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. And I believe Mr. Hyatt is here for Gibellina. Good evening, Mr. Hyatt. If you could just put your name and address on the record for us, and I'm going to have your... Uh, your licensees do the same thing. Great, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Alan Hyatt, on behalf of Church MRG LLC, I'm located at 200 Westgate Circle in Annapolis. All right, Ms. Staples, could you put your name and address on the record, please? Taya Staples, 809 7th Street, Northeast, Washington, DC, 22002. And ma'am, I'm not even gonna try to butcher your last name, so I'm just gonna call you Stacey. If you could just put your you name and address Stacey. on the record, thank you. <laughs> Stacey Gadenson, and my address is 2916 Southwater Point Drive, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Great. Thank you so much. Mr. Hyatt, go right ahead and tell us about Thank this. you. Sure. The, the special exception for this standard restaurant was granted way back in December of 2018. Uh, extensions were granted uh, for the special exception, and the has been made by the Department of Planning and Zoning that it's it's been established based upon the work uh, underway at, at the project. What we have here 
is a um, building, really it's three buildings combined at the top of Main Street, formerly the old Annapolis Bank and Trust structure, ultimately PNC Bank and then uh, vacant. And so there was an extensive amount of work that had to be done on these historic buildings by hand. And that took up 2019 uh, doing that work. It just, it was painstaking and tedious to, to get it ready to fit up for a restaurant. And of course, then we, we came upon a state of emergency that began in March of 2020. And there was not a lot of work done on the restaurant fit up uh, during that uh, time of emergency. Uh, the board, this board approved the license uh, in December of 2019, and it just wasn't possible to pick it up. Uh, or actually it was approved before that, but the pickup date, the original pickup date, I think was December of 2019. We had the state of emergency and, and the last extension uh, that was granted expires six months after the end of the state of emergency. And I'm not sure if that's February 1st or January 1st. I'm not, I'm not uh, completely clear. What we've requested is uh, in, in the letter an extension until April 1st, but I think uh, to be safe so we don't have to come back again and, and run into difficulties, I, I would amend the request for six additional months. And I think that would take us uh, until the end of June at the, at the minimum, if, if in fact we're dealing with January 1st. Uh, so where we are in the progress of, of, the, uh, of the build out is that uh, my clients tell me they're about 75% finished. I mean, and this is a project that has millions of dollars invested in it. I mean, this is, this is going to be, you know, just not some, you know, open up a restaurant. This is, this is really a substantial facility and it's going to have catering. And I don't know if you remember, but it's going to be quite extensive. And uh, every step of the way, uh, there has been delays on uh, equipment delivery and work the uh, site because of materials and you know for example the certain tile within the facility is uh, is being imported from Italy and over six months and that tile is not there yet and so we've had those types of problems there's been equipment delays uh, the hood has not yet been installed you know above the uh, cooking facility but there's work going on every day right now. This is not one of these projects that's abandoned. It, there's things that are happening every day. Uh, flooring, for example, has been uh, completed, the, you know, the concrete flooring, uh, wall finishes, booth construction, uh, wiring, walk-ins, they, they've been installed, millwork for cabinetry, uh, the vestibule construction, there's been a historic entrance that's being rebuilt. This is, this is a significant project and it just, there's, there's really been no negligence on the part of the applicant or the landlord really. I mean, the landlord's done as much as uh, it could do under the circumstances. And, you know, given the fact that this, we're this far along, we would respectfully request the extension uh, noted. And so you would want, you amended and you want till June 30th, 2022. I think we should do that to be safe. I, I mean, we may be open by April 1st, but I would not like to come back on, you know, March 25th and uh, ask for another extension. Sure, understood. I appreciate that. All right. Um, does the board have any questions of Mr. Hyatt or either of the licensees regarding this extension request? No? Okay, hearing none, um, do I hear a motion regarding this request for a longer than six month extension to pick up an approved alcoholic beverage license for Church MRG LLC trading as Gibellina, 18 Church Circle, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. The extension would be to June 30th, 2022. Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. 
Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Stands approved. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate you. it. Okay. Bye. I have to run and grab my power cord for my computer. So I will be right back. It's right downstairs. Apologies for the delay. All right, sorry about that. We're back in business here. All right, next item, we have a request from Maryland Hall for the Creative Arts to receive credit for previously approved event that canceled at the last minute due to COVID-19. <clears throat> the previously approved event was Ramshead Presents the Marshall Tucker Band, October 25th, 2021 from 6 to 10 p.m. Mr. Coughlin, good to see you tonight. Um, if you could put your name and address on the record for us, please. Yes, Dennis Coughlin, 308 Linden Avenue, Annapolis, Maryland. All right, why don't you tell us about what you're looking for, sir? Well, um, that, that event did cancel about two hours before uh, we found out that, that two members of the band had been had tested positive for COVID. The theater was all set, the sound, the lights, everything all done. It was a very shocking last minute uh, uh, close down for that one. Uh, they <clears throat> were rescheduled for December the 21st of this year. So in about three weeks from now, and I'm just inquiring whether or not I could use the same uh, liquor license uh, for this. Uh, it's the same show uh, for the same thing. Support, okay. have any questions about this request? I don't see any reason why we can't, why we can't transfer it over. I think it's, go ahead, Dick. I move that we move it over. Do I hear a second? Second. second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. It stands approved. And and I'm sorry, Mr. Coughlin, what is what's the new date for it? Uh, December 21, Tuesday, December, December 21. 21. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right. Just want that for our records. Excellent. Thank you very much. Good luck with right, this. Good luck. Hopefully, hopefully Thanks it goes. So much. Well. Happy, happy holidays, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up we have a request for consumption on uh, city property. We have an application for the consumption of alcoholic beverages on city property with beer, wine, and liquor, live music um, to Purnell Jones for a 75th birthday party scheduled on Sunday, December 26, 2021 from 3 to 8 p.m. located at the Stanton Community Center, 92 West Washington Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Um, and who do we have here tonight on this request? Colonel Jones. Mr. Jones, how are you? I'm fine, yourself? <clears throat> I'm doing well, thanks. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this party? Uh, it's my dad's uh, 75th birthday, birthday party is a surprise. Uh, just family, friends, um, and just trying to make sure that he enjoys himself for the most part. Okay, and you're expecting about 70 people to be there? Correct. Okay, um, and you're gonna have uh, who, who's who's providing the alcohol? Uh, I think it's gonna. I think the way my brother intended it to be was for people to bring their own, because it would okay. be a lot easier that way. All right, and how are you gonna make sure that uh, young kids aren't diving into people's bottles that they bring? Oh, well, there nobody will be there that's under the age of twenty-one. Okay, great. And I see on the application you said you're gonna check IDs, so I'm guessing. Anybody who looks like they might be under 21, you're going to check their ID? Correct. Okay. All right. Do members of the board have any questions, Mr. Jones? I mean, so I, guess, mean I guess I guess my, my only question is, like, and you guys do a wonderful job um, at, uh, at having these gatherings and stuff, and I just, I just – who is going to be monitoring, like, security-wise uh, oh. the party, really? like – Billy Jones and Corey Jones, and then also somebody will be here that's working that night as well by the name of Larry Beavis. He will be here as well. So okay. there'll be three people overseeing everything. Great. Awesome. Thank you. No problem at all. 
Any other questions of Mr. Jones? Um, when do I when do I go by picking it up? That's about it. <laughs> well, let's <laughs> let's let's approve it first. My my oh, okay. You want to call Cindy? Um, you want to call our deputy city clerk, and she can tell <clears> you <throat> and pick it up. Okay. Yes, sir. My bad. <laughs> All right. Now, do I hear a motion regarding this application for consumption of alcoholic beverages on city property with beer, wine and liquor, live music and a band to Pernell Jones for a 75th birthday party located on Sunday, December 26, 2021 from 3 to 8 p.m. Stanton Community Center, 92 West Washington Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, it stands approved. Have a good time and contact Thank you. contact Cindy. She'll she'll tell you when you can come get it and give you all the uh, the, the nitty gritty details on what what else you need. Yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'm tired. All right, it's all right. I get it. Thank I appreciate you so it. I have a great one. I appreciate. Good luck. Take have care. a good party. Bye -bye. Have a good party. All right. Next, we have a, another request for a consumption or for, for a license for consumption of alcoholic beverages on city property at the Stanton Center. We have an application um, for consumption of alcoholic beverages on city property with beer, wine, and liquor, live music, and a band to Carmen Aguilar for a quinceanera scheduled on Saturday, December eleventh, twenty twenty one, from three to twelve, three p.m. to twelve midnight at the Stanton Community Center. 92 West Washington Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Do we have anybody here? Uh, Michelle is here. Hi. Hi, could you please just introduce yourself to us? Um, I'm Michelle. <laughs> I'm the one who's having the quinceanera on December 11th. Okay. Um, are, you the, are you the individual who made this application? No, I'm just helping my mom because she doesn't speak English. Oh, okay. Okay, your mom's there. Hi, mom. Um, okay. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about this party? Um, it's a little bit unusual that somebody underage is kind of translating. So, um, you know, tell us about what's going on. If we have any questions, we'll, we'll chime in. So it's a quinceanera because I'm turning 15. And um, it's just a party to celebrate with our family and friends and um well, yeah that's pretty much all <laughs> okay. now i see you're gonna have approximately 200 guests huh yeah okay and it's a bring your own alcohol event yeah so with so many young people um who are going to be present how are you how is your mom going to ensure that no minors are served She's gonna give adults when in the entrance. She's gonna ask the securities if they could give adults who are that want to take alcohol to give them um, a little stamp on their hand. And then if they're young kids, they're not allowed to have a stamp on their hand. Okay, and you have a, you you hired a security team, Wells Security. Yeah, from the stamp center. Okay. Do you are you going to have bartenders who are going to be serving this alcohol? <sighs> Yeah. Okay. And are they going to be TIP certified alcohol awareness trained? You said what? Sorry. Are they going to be alcohol awareness trained? The bartenders? Where are you getting the bartenders from? One of my family members. Okay. Does that family member have an alcohol awareness training certificate? No. Okay. I'm going to let the board chime in and ask any questions that they may have here. Can you tell us if you plan to have any type of music at this affair, ma'am? Yes. And are you, aware of, are, are you aware of the noise control ordinance for the city? In other words, you're not allowed to have it extend outside of the building for more than like a hundred feet or so. Where? I'm sorry. Would 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 you repeat your answer, ma'am? I said yes. Michelle, can you turn the camera so we can see your face better, please? 
Thank you. And Michelle, does your, your, your mother fully understands the responsibilities that go in line with having a, a one day liquor license, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you ask that to her and have her confirm that? Sabe que tiene una responsabilidad de que tiene que no puede tomar los niños chiquitos cerveza y las adultas. Sí, dile que por eso vamos a comprar el sello para ponerle ahí. Yeah. Y a she says she says she understands and she understands that she has to give the adult stamps on the hand if they want alcohol. All right. Does the board have any other questions before I turn this to a motion? You know, I don't have a question. It's just more like I cannot reiterate enough that, um, you know, us granting you this license and I want you guys to have a great time, but um, I'm a little concerned about, you know, yeah, you're going to have people stamping, but who are these, you know, and I know that they're there are people from the Stanton Center, but I mean, are they security folks that you guys are going to have? Like, I just want to make sure that, you know, there aren't going to be, you know, youngsters that are going to be able to get in and have alcohol. That's very concerning to me. No, there's securities from the Stanton Center. Okay. They are adults who know that kids won't, be, they are not allowed to have stamps on their hand, only adults. Okay. Um, and you're, I, you're, oh, sorry, Kia, go ahead. Sorry, can I follow up with, um, in terms of security, I know that it's Stanton Center folks. Do you know how many will, how many security guards will be within there? It's going to be two in total. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you plan on having one of the security guards kind of police the bar area to ensure there are no youngsters being served? Yes. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Well, do I hear a motion regarding this application for consumption of alcoholic beverages on city property with beer, wine, and liquor, live music, as well to Carmen Aguilar for a quinceanera uh, scheduled on Saturday, December 11th, 2021 from 3 p.m. to 12 midnight at the Stanton Community Center 92 West Washington Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. You know, I motion to approve. Uh, I understand how important a Quinciera is. I really do. So good luck to y'all. I definitely. Sure, I second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Have a good time. Be very, very safe, though, please. Thank you. Okay. Next, um, we have a, a request for consumption of alcoholic beverages at the Stanton Center again. This time, um, it's for beer, wine, and liquor, live music, and a band to Frederica Dow for a holiday cocktail sip for seniors, scheduled on Saturday, December 18th, 2021, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., located at the Stanton Community Center, 92 West Washington Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. I believe we have Miss Dow here. Miss Dow, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm just having a problem um, getting my picture up on the screen. I don't know what I'm not doing. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. There should be a little video camera button in the bottom left of your screen. Okay. Oh, I'm stuck. Let's see. There we go. There you are. Oh, we see you. There you are. Hey, you see me. Okay, I don't see you all now. I don't know what I did, but I can answer your questions. Okay, great. Um, yeah. can you just tell us your name and address for the record. Okay, my name is Frederica Dowell, 1420 Bay Ridge Avenue, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. All right, why don't you tell us a little bit about this party, Miss Dowell? Okay, well, last year um, was our... 45th class um, would have been our 45th class reunion. However, due to COVID-19 and pandemic, we were unable to meet. So at the last minute, um, I spoke to a friend of mine. And I said, well, let's have a 
jingle and mingle and try to pull as many class members together as we can because we lost maybe about close to 20 class members since our last reunion um, when we had our 40th year reunion. So um, I just decided to just try to host it and um, bring some people together. Okay. And you're expecting about 50 people to come? Um, because I really didn't have enough time to really put it out there. I'm saying 50, maybe no more than 60 at the okay. most. All right. And nobody under 21 is going to be present. No, as a matter of fact, when I put it out, I said 55 and older, 55 okay. and over. Nobody under that will be allowed to come in. Okay, great. Um, and you're going to have a DJ as well? Yes. Okay. All right. Does the board have any questions about this uh, this event? No, my question was going to be, would there be any kids there? Absolutely none. No, <laughs> 55 and older. And I'm only, um, we're in our 60s, but I'm only going with 55 because someone's spouse or significant other may be a couple of years younger than us. So I'm just making the limit 55. Well, I, I like your title of the party. <laughs> yes, because it's been a long time and, and we really need this. We've been we've been getting together at funerals and memorial services and, you know, on the phone talking about different classmates that have passed. And if we run into someone, you know, we, we can't even really talk about our families, you know, and our and our grandkids and the things that we've been doing since we've been out of high school or the last reunion. So I think everybody that I've talked to is really excited to, you know, just about seeing each other, you know, or as many as we can. And just to get together because, you know, this last year, we just don't, we didn't know what was gonna be happening if we were ever gonna get together. That's about it. Well, I, I, uh, I motion for approval. I second. I'll second. Thank you, All thank those you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Thank you. Have all. a great so time. Have, have a, great a good time. time. Great time. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. You all have a wonderful holiday. It means a yeah, lot to me. Thank you so much. Absolutely. You too. Good. Okay. Good luck. Good night. Thanks. Good night. All right. Well, that is the last item. Um, we do have a couple of things to discuss in an executive session. So I would move to exit and reconvene in an executive session. Second. All those in favor. Okay. Aye. Aye. All right.